Good morning, everybody. It is day two for E3. We are on the show floor, and people are going to start streaming in here any minute to get playing on Uncharted 3, on Twisted Metal, on Warhawk, Starhawk even, and PlayStation Vita. So I'm very happy to be joined right now by the Senior Vice President of Product Development for Sony Worldwide Studios. I think that means you're responsible for everything that we see here. <laughs> Scott Rohde. So, uh, Scott, you were on stage just a couple of days ago. Yeah. We got to really, you've been the guy that when we show all the different games on PlayStation Vita, you're the one introducing it. You sort of, uh, you, well, tell us exactly what you do with the different developers. Well, I mean, we have many different developers within Worldwide Studios working on uh, all these great Vita titles, right? So it's been a really big thrill for me to uh, work on this for such a long time, right? And not only working on our, with our first party studios, but also helping to evangelize this machine to all our third party partners. And that's been a really fun task as well. What's been yeah. the response? Like we know what the fans have been yeah. thinking and it's, it's been pretty good, especially yeah. when they found out that it'll be $249 to start. Tell us what the developers are saying when they first saw Vita. Absolutely fantastic. It's been almost the same response every single time, right? So I'll walk in, I'll show them this device, and the first thing they do when they pick it up is they say, wow, it's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be, right? And of course, everyone you know, raves about the fact that it has two analog sticks, and they say, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. They rave about the screen, and then we start showing them demos, right? And they, they start to get it. They start to understand you know, how, how the back touch really makes a big difference and gives the designers a whole toolbox to work with and you can just start to see the gears turning and they get really excited about the possibilities for this machine. Now, uh, we've seen a, a lot of creative uses and I know a lot of the hardcore gamers, and I, and I do consider myself one of them, I, I was born with sticks in my hand and uh, you know, touch is sort of like, ah, but finding myself, you know, good usage, like uh, for instance, we have a Virtua Tennis right over here yeah. and, and it was like, what, touch on a tennis game, I don't know about that, and they were like, how about this? Why don't you use the left stick to move your player around, and then you can use your right hand to use uh, on the screen to set yeah. your shots. Or vice versa, you can move the guy around with your finger and use one of the buttons to do the shots. You can really do it whatever way you want. And that's a really good example of what every single developer is saying. I mean, again, the gears just start turning and they say, wow, we could do this, or we could do that, or we could do this, right? And they get really excited. So again, I mean, you've had people even starting to take it this way and say, hey, you hold one controller, I'll hold another, I'll use some touch here, like that. You know, all sorts of really interesting ways to use this machine. Yeah. So let's go back even a, a step further. Uh -huh. When you, the machine itself was getting developed, uh -huh. um, I was talking with uh, John Garvin and Chris Reese from Sony Ben. They're making Uncharted Gold and Abyss. Yeah. They said that, uh, actually, the engineers came to them and said, what do you want to see? Yeah, and this is a really great you know, collaboration between all these great, brilliant engineers at SCEI and all the teams at Worldwide Studios. So exactly what John and Chris told you, that's exactly what happened with many developers. Of course, John and Chris and Ben Studio were way out ahead of the, of the curve, you know, developing Uncharted the whole time, and they did. I mean, the first thing every developer on the face of the planet said was, give me two analog sticks, right? That was the number one thing. Then, at one time, this screen was smaller, right? It was a lot smaller because we thought maybe it'd be cooler to have something that you could just slide into your pocket. But everyone started thinking about the possibilities of a larger screen, and then the developers started getting really excited. Then the back touch came into play, and people started to realize, especially on that Uncharted team, that let's say you were holding an object in the Uncharted world, you could really feel like you were holding an object on the front, on the back, with the motion sensors, it was like you were holding something, holding it up to the light as I, as I, as I yanked the audio cable. Um, <laughs> you know, basically making you feel like you're part of the world, right? And that's something that we really wanted to bring to life with Vita. So yeah. uh, a thing that I think I'm perhaps most uh, excited about is, is the idea, and I, and I really feel like portable gaming, since it started, I don't know, 20 years ago, yeah. the ultimate goal was to be able to have that same experience that you have at home wherever you go. And there's a couple of different ways in which uh, the, the Vita and the PS3 are gonna be able to interact. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, you got a few hours. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, right? So I'll, I'll talk about a few. Talking about games like Mod Nation Racers first, right? On day one, when that game ships on Vita, 
all those creations that have been created by the community in the PS3 will be available and they will work on the Vita on day one. That's so cool. very, very cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> then we're talking about Ruin, which is another game that was debuted on stage the other night. Um, play along on the Vita, pause, save to the cloud, and pick up where you left on the PS3. How cool is that? Right. That, is, that is, I think, ultimate. I mean, I remember we were oh, yeah. flying out to, to the debut of this machine yeah. in, in January, and we were all just starting to play Mass Effect. It just to it just had come out on PS3, and we're sitting there like, man, I wish I was able to play that on the go. You know, That's getting it. that yeah. home experience yeah. all on the go. So, and and these opportunities are open to developers and publishers to figure out what works best for their titles. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I don't want to leave out is with a title like Wipeout, you're literally yeah. playing online some people on the Vita, some people on the PS3. I mean, this is a truly integrated machine and all that stuff is working today. You know, not a promise for later, it's working today. So pretty excited about that. Yeah, it's light, yeah. but it's that doesn't mean vaporware. It is, it's, it's just very, very light. Yeah. And light I think, but deep. Yeah, and, and, and the thing I, I think is really cool is for games like Wipeout, a lot of people, uh, whether they've already had it or even through the Welcome Back program, are going to have Wipeout uh, HD plus Fury. There's going to be a community there waiting Day one when you when you get your Vita. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry to butt in. No, I, I have to ask. I'm sure everyone wants to know. Talk about the name. Talk about the philosophy. Yeah. Talk about the journey to getting to Vita. Well, as you know, it's always a very interesting process to name any device or any product, right? So from day one, you know, a lot of people were really into this concept of this machine changing your life and this being part of your life. And of course, Vita, Vitality, that's part of your life. That's how they came up with the name. And I think it's cool. It really, really speaks to what the device is going to provide for everybody. So uh, speaking of life, like right now we're actually seeing some World Cup highlights playing out here. Tell us about this screen, because this screen, it's, uh, uh, we're obviously you're yeah. watching through the internet right now, so you can't tell as much, but it is incredibly vivid. It's very screen. Sony. <laughs> the screen is absolutely ridiculous, right? Again, this is the thing that when I show this to any developer, after they say how light it is, they just freak out about the screen, seriously. I mean, you're talking the true blacks and the, and the, the true whites. Um, I, what I always say to any press who wants to hold this is I dare you to find an angle yep. that isn't crystal clear with oh, this yeah. thing. I mean, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. actually, a lot of great questions are coming in via the Twitterverse right now. And our own uh, uh, Twit Warlord, Sid Schumann, has a few questions. So uh, let's, uh, let's hear it. Got a great question here from Mecor. He wants to know, Uncharted and Wipeout look super sweet. How much of the processing powder of Vita is used for those games? Well, I mean, I think, again, we're still just kind of uncovering how much power this machine has. I'm always going to give you that answer because this thing hasn't even shipped yet. So the guys we were talking about, like the guys in the Ben studio, um, they have been working directly with the engineers and SCEI to try to pull as much power out of this thing as possible, but they're still uncovering what it can do. So the best answer I can give you is, I don't know. It's still going to grow. That is the best answer. Let's get, let's get one more in here. One of the most popular questions I'm getting easily yeah. is, can you play PSP games on Vita, and how's that going to work? This is a good answer. Yes. <laughs> he already knows the answer. Yes. yes, you absolutely can. So through the PSN, right, you can take the games that you've downloaded onto your PSN account, and you can play them on the Vita, but it gets better, right? If it's a game that would use two analog sticks or should use analog sticks, like Resistance Retribution, also from our friends in Ben's studio, right, the game will automatically be mapped to the second stick and the hardware graphic smoothing capabilities will make the game look better than it did on PSP. So very cool. Yeah, we actually saw that a couple weeks ago with yeah. Retribution, and it's a totally, it's just a totally different game. It's, Absolutely. It's, you know, a, a new lease online. Yeah. So, let's talk about the price and what that does. How that excites, it's got to excite the developers, knowing that making it so accessible means more people are going to get to play their game. Yeah. That was a goal from day one. I'm talking two plus years ago when we started talking about this machine. Everyone said, this thing needs to come out at a price that's affordable to the masses on day one. And that goal was $249, right? And I am so proud and thrilled and, and you know extremely proud of those engineers, those brilliant engineers in SCEI who were able to pull that off so Cause could stand on stage the other night and announced with a giant smile on his face, 249. I mean, that's a really great launch price. I'm really proud of that. Yeah, I, yeah. if there was a Vegas line, I think everyone was coming in over. Absolutely, and you know what? When we first unveiled this thing in Tokyo a few months ago, right? And everyone was saying, 
500, 499. I just had the biggest smile on my face. We all sort of did. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, can, can we get a, a look at this, Forrest? Do you mind uh, coming in? We haven't had, been able to get this on camera. It'd be great just we could just zoom in and just see how nice to turn the lines. I know uh, Dale North from Destructoid, one of our good friends. Um, I, I think just in, a, in, a, in a, a sign that the engineers were listening to feedback, the power button's on the top. And, and that's that's something that people wanted. That was for you, Dale North. Thumb hit, you know, the SB was on the side. Can we show the back? Actually, that's my favorite part. Yeah. The PlayStation Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That. That's funny. So this yeah. is uh, one of the cameras here. Yeah. And then another one is on the front. That's right. I mean, it's amazing. I didn't even talk about the cameras here today. I mean, okay. that's just something else, right? So again, part of that toolbox that designers can get excited about. I think what the guys in uh, on the Uncharted team are doing, they're experimenting with holding it up to the light and seeing how that, you know, you can see things shining through a piece of ancient papyrus, right? And you can see, you know, what that looks like and how you can reveal something secret by holding it up to the light. Very cool different things. Also, AR usage with games yep. like Reality Fighters and things like that. Very cool with the cameras. I, I think you hardcore yeah. gamers out there, you, you, ha you have the sticks, you have the things that you've been asking for, but I, I honestly believe having played with this, you're gonna you're gonna like a lot of the touch stuff more than you expect right now. It's I remember there's one point uh, I think it was using some sort of you were making an imprint of uh, something in in Golden Abyss and it was like playing a scratch off Lotto and there's a reason you play that because it's fun just to do that and, and having that in the game mm -hmm. and uh, you know not having to uh, pay two bucks each was yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things you can, a lot of ways you can go with all those different interfaces, and that's exactly what you were pointing out. Absolutely. So I guess Sing, just single thing. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say I was going to wrap it up, but you've got yeah. one more. Go Sing, right single now. thing you're most excited about right now with Vita. We're here. We're here. I was just going to ask that. There's, <laughs> there's so many things. So, you know, honestly, I am really excited about this back touch, right? And you know why? It's because we've used it a little bit in some of these games, and you're just starting to see developers get creative with it. Maybe using you know, each different side as like a giant shoulder button or to use things to, to simulate, you know, um, you know, PlayStation Move-like movements with swipes and things like that. It's amazing how intuitive it is to do things on the back touch and it doesn't throw, you know, it doesn't get in the way of the screen view at all. And there's a lot you can do with that. It's very exciting and very innovative. Scott Rohde, the thing, thing I like about this company is that senior vice president level, charge of games, you're one of us. You are very clearly one, one of, of us. us. And, one and of having us. someone like that, not a suit, but you know, <laughs> making decisions like this is is really cool. And you and Shu, and Shu is a hell of a gamer as well, Shuhei Yoshida, and that yes, means yes. a heck of a lot. And I think it shows in the product and in the innovation of, of our studios, of Worldwide Studios. That's a great compliment. I appreciate that. Thank well, you. Thank you.